I'm very glad that I was able to catch the first ever Fire Emblem Direct live. So you're probably all wanting my thoughts on it, so here they are. Like that Super Smash Bros. Direct that I managed to catch live, this was my general thought process once it started. Huh, so, okay, we've got a bit of a castle setting here. We've got these two kids talking. Wait a minute, why are they mentioning Mila and Duma? Is the Fire Emblem mobile game going to relate to Gaiden's mythology somehow? Wait a minute. Wait... No, they couldn't. There's no way they could... They, they actually did?! So yes, Fire Emblem Echoes Shadow of Valentia. A game that I'm sure pretty much nobody saw coming, except maybe Shadow of Chaos when he was making a joke. So, um, yeah, Gaiden remake out of nowhere. I'm actually really glad the Direct opened with this, because this thing pretty much shocked everyone, and was certain to make them really hyped for the rest of the presentation. Well, I mean, this was definitely the real high note. The rest was definitely a step down from this. It's been a while since the last Fire Emblem remake game, and even longer since the last Fire Emblem remake game that was actually released in English. I've always wondered what a remake would be like if it was done in this era, and it definitely looks pretty promising. It seems to have a good mix of being faithful to the original, while still adding modern innovations, which certain aspects of Gaiden desperately needed. For one, I'm pretty sure the Angel Ring won't work like it did in the original game. You can be very, very much assured of that. That thing would be totally busted by modern standards. But anyway, I like the art style quite a lot. I like how they're moving away from the art style they use with Awakening and Fates. I don't dislike Awakening and Fates art style, but it's refreshing to see a new art style being done. And I feel a change like this is something that the series does need. I also feel like now is a very good time for a remake. Back when Shadow Dragon and New Mystery of the Emblem were coming out, all I could think of is, please give us a totally new game with a new cast of characters. And then they did for Awakening. And then after Awakening and Fates happened, I'm kind of thinking, you know, I think the series could really use a remake right now. Some time to go back and revisit their roots, find out what made the earlier games great, and just take some time to get their bearings, realise what went wrong with Fates and improve on it for the next game. I don't think Fates was a bad game at all, in fact, from a pure gameplay standpoint, I consider it one of the best in the series, mainly the Conquest route. But it definitely has a lot of major issues that I really think the developers need time to realise, work out, and just work on before they start doing a new game. And like I said, doing a remake will give them the time they need to do this. Thinking back on Gaiden's story though, so much of it was really ahead of its time. It's kind of sad that this trailer, in fact being very faithful to the original Gaiden, does a better job of depicting a morally ambiguous conflict than Fates did, and this is a game that what came out in the early 1990s? When it was rare for video games to even have a serious plot? I won't say much more so as not to spoil certain plot developments for people who aren't familiar with Gaiden, but I will say that certain characters go in quite different directions than you'd probably expect, and are actually pretty radically subversive for their time. Seriously, if I looked at some of aspects of Gaiden now, I would think of them as a deconstruction of later series conventions, but actually it was only the second game in the series. Oh, and I also realised there are a few other things about Gaiden as well. For one, it actually takes place between both of Marth's games, and in the same universe. So, those of you who don't know certain things about Gaiden, a couple of character appearances might surprise you, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with said characters. Also, it's set on the continent that later becomes Valm in Fire Emblem Awakening. Some analysis has actually shown that the Regellian flag bears a lot of resemblance to the Valm flag in Awakening. I'm pretty sure that's intentional. Also, this King of Regel that you see in this cutscene footage, who I'm not going to name just so as not to spoil people who haven't played Gaiden, but their armour design definitely harkens to Walhart quite a bit. On another note, thinking back, I'm actually kind of surprised I didn't see all the signs that pointed to this. Fire Emblem Fates actually had a lot of callbacks to Gaiden, 
And it's only now that I'm realising just how intentional those probably were. A lot of the spells, like Ragnarok, were taken from Gaiden, a system of unbreakable weapons was also in that game, and the My Castle system, being able to walk around in a town, that was also from Gaiden. Actually, speaking of the weapon system, just going on another tangent here, I'm wondering how they'll deal with the equipment system. Fire Emblem Gaiden had a very weird way of handling equipment. Every character only had one inventory slot, which could either be a weapon or an accessory. And if you use that slot in an accessory, the character would just use a generic, basically, not even an iron weapon, it'd just be called, like, sword or bow. I'm almost positive they will change this for this game, and will have the more modern inventory system, probably with unbreakable weapons. I'm wondering whether or not skills will be in the game as well. It looks as though a rudimentary support system of some kind is going to be in the game, based on a combat forecast window. And the original Gaiden featured no support conversations, so... I would actually quite like to see them add supports to this one. Though I know a bunch of the fandom would go ballistic if there were children or marriage in the game, I get the feeling there will just be supports here. I could be wrong, but I do feel like they'll just restrict it to a normal support system, since uh, having to add in child characters would be probably a radical enough departure that fans of the original would get very angry, and they definitely seem to be doing this with fans of the original in mind. Also, it seems like there is no Avatar to be seen here. I also think that that's a good thing for the series. I feel like that's something else they have to take a break from, and just kind of just retire that concept for a little while before they do another one again. Because it definitely got a bit out of control. Speaking of new characters, though, some screenshots confirmed, for people who are familiar with the cast of the first game, that there will indeed be new characters added. Much like Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon added some new characters to the original too, though in this case, I desperately hope these characters get more attention than the new cast in Shadow Dragon, who are all regulated to murder side quests. The main evidence of this is, we can see what is clearly a female villager in this shrine menu here, and her name, if you can read Japanese, is Effie. Yeah, they're gonna have to change that in the localization because they already used that one. Speaking of names they're gonna have to change in the localization, this guy! If you can read Japanese, his name is in fact Robin. Yeah, uh, decades before Robin in Awakening was even a thing, so yeah, that's another name that's probably going to be changed, though I'm pretty sure, just saying, he's not going to be named Bird. <laughs> For those who don't know, he was literally called Bird in an early, really terrible fan translation of Gaiden that had a four-character limit for character names, and so, um, that got pretty silly. <laughs> While I'm showing these scenes, something interesting that some people have noticed from the trailers is that the lines that these characters say in these scenes, namely Robin here and then Saber, these lines are fully voiced. Now, I'm not getting my hopes up for complete fully voice acted dialogue through the whole game. I feel like this is more of a case where, you know how in Awakening and Fates there were some full lines that were voiced if they were significant enough? Like Basilio's Don't You Put Any Stock in This Destiny Hogwash? I think the same thing is happening here. Some lines are fully voice acted, but they're in a massive minority. I guess I should just get one random thought out of the way. I wonder if 1 to 5 range bows are still going to be a thing in this game. Archers were quite interesting in Gaiden, and in some ways it was the only game in the series that, well, one of the few games in the series that actually did archers well. You can actually see in the trailers, somebody attacks an archer with a sword, and the archer counterattacks. This implies that at the very least, there will be one to two range bows in this game. Maybe all bows will be, will have one range, I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, I'm still not sure about 1 to 5 range bows. That was kind of a class ability of the fully upgraded archers in that game. In fact, on that note, I wonder if the three-tier class system from Gaiden is going to be back here. Gaiden did a three-tier class system before Radiant Dawn did. For example, soldiers promoting to armor knights, which promote into... Well, they were called Baron originally, but I'm pretty sure they're going to be called General now. So, yeah, I wonder if they'll keep the three-tier system. One final thing about this game, the very fact that this game exists greatly increases the chance of Gaiden characters appearing in Fire Emblem Warriors. Alm and Selica have now been added to my pretty much definite picks list. 
I'm sure they'll be in the game, especially considering they had Amiibo. Because they wouldn't really, you know, they wouldn't miss the opportunity to promote the most recently released game in the series, and that being a Gaiden remake now, we're bound to see Gaiden characters. So, speaking of which, on to Fire Emblem Warriors, by far the most disappointing part of this presentation to me, because they were like, hey, we're going to be showing new footage here that was not in the original trailer. And we see this new footage, and it confirms that Chrom is in the game. Hey, we already knew that. I mean, at least we get a brief glimpse of what the actual gameplay looks like, but a little disappointing there weren't any new characters revealed. Speaking of disappointing, one other thing that caught my attention. The voice clips that Chrom says. If you have any knowledge of the Japanese version of Awakening, or have played Awakening with Japanese voices on, you will definitely recognise Chrom's voice clips there. They sound suspiciously like stock footage from Awakening, and that worries me. I was really hoping for new voice dialogue in Fire Emblem Warriors. Just reusing voice clips from Awakening sounds very lazy, so I'm hoping that's just placeholder voice clips, or, I don't know, that they will at least record new voice clips for non-Awakening and Fates characters. I, I can only hope. Oh, and the game is also coming to new 3DS, which, uh, yeah, I guessed that for a long time because of Hyrule Warriors getting that port, and in some ways, I'm actually pretty glad this is new 3DS exclusive because from what I've heard, Hyrule Warriors Legends ran terribly on regular 3DSs to the point where it was almost unplayable. So restricting it to a new 3DS sounds like a good idea. I don't have a new 3DS personally, so I'll definitely be getting the Switch version, but I still approve of this decision. Oh, and also they revealed that um, they're developing a new Fire Emblem game for the Switch. And that's all. I can't really have any comments here. We know literally nothing about this game besides the fact that they're making it. So yeah, I'll move right on to the next thing, Fire Emblem Heroes. We finally have a title for Fire Emblem Mobile. This game is pretty much what I expected that it would be. All of the gameplay mechanics and how they handle microtransactions definitely feels like what I expected from a mobile Fire Emblem game. At the very least, I'm very glad that you don't need to pay money to resurrect characters. It being pretty much permanently on casual mode, which has been confirmed by some of the screenshots, that's fine by me. I mean, it fits it being a mobile game, you know, a bit of a non-serious one, just something light to play on the go. I've never been a very big fan of mobile gaming, in fact I don't own a single mobile game, never downloaded or played one in my life, not even Pokemon Go shockingly enough. This one though, might tempt me to download it. It is free, though I get the feeling I won't be spending money on this one. I generally don't like supporting the free to play with microtransactions model, even though Nintendo does do it a lot better than most other companies do, I will say that. At least this game doesn't look very exploitative with free to play, it's not like those games where it's like, oh hey, uh, yeah, it's free to download, but if you want to actually have fun, you need to pay billions of dollars. No, this is more like, kind of like Pokemon Go or a few of the other Nintendo titles. Like, you can spend more money to get more orbs, but you can get those through regular gameplay anyway. I feel like I'll try and play this as much as possible without using microtransactions. See how interesting it is. I might even give a little review once the game comes out, which is actually surprisingly soon. Granted, I don't think there's any way that I can actually record mobile phone footage, so not sure if I'd really be able to do any footage in that review, I'd probably just have to talk about it, but I digress. Anyway, so one thing that kind of did surprise me was the fact that they actually had other characters from across the whole series. I am very glad to see that this is going to be including everyone, not just Awakening and Fates characters like a lot of people would probably think. And with that, we also get a whole slew of characters who are appearing to Western audiences for the very first time. I really like this, it, and not only that, but these characters are going to be voice acted too for the first time. I'm mostly happy with that, except that Lilina voice. Uh, yeah. That's the one voice that I didn't really like. The rest were all great. I'm kind of impressed that they're actually doing new voice recordings just for this game. It's kind of more than can be said for what Warriors is looking like at this point. But yeah, it's a shame these characters are randomised, but that's kind of how things go. I'll try and build up a collection of some of my favourite characters as it progresses. I'm sure it really shouldn't be that bad, just, you know, making use of what you get. 
So overall, it feels like this is kind of going to be like Final Fantasy All the Bravest, except actually good. Or at least as good as a mobile game can get. Again, it does feel like a very light, watered-down experience, but that's kind of fine. I mean, it's a mobile game. I wasn't expecting anything too spectacular from it. And I mean, in all honesty, I'm not expecting anything too spectacular from the story either. Though, weirdly, setting my expectations really low for the story might actually be a good thing. Seeing as I think, like, the main reason why everyone didn't like Fates' story is they had their expectations set way too high. With expectations as low as they are for this game's story, I'm actually wondering if it might turn out to be good. The original characters that we see look kind of interesting, and I really like the fact that Anna is the Jagan now. It's a kind of a cool twist to longtime fans of the series, though being a red-haired axe-using Jagan does remind me a lot of Titania. But anyway, it's kind of cool to see Anna being a playable party member right from the start, and again, her taking the role of the Jagan. Not really all that much else to say here, but one more thing is they opened up this voting thing for uh, Choose Your Heroes, and uh, yeah, I'd highly recommend that all of you get on and vote. I've been doing that, I've so far got said there. I think after this ends, I'll post a screenshot of, like as in when the event ends, not when this video ends obviously, I'll post a screenshot of all of my picks throughout all the days. The time zone is a bit annoying for me at this point, I've been trying to vote for my second character and I can't until 5pm my time. I mean, I personally feel like my vote is not going to make a difference, because Chrome, Takumi and Leo's husband or fandoms are going to crush all the competition easily. So yeah, but I'm mostly voting for lesser known characters or my personal favourites. The main draw of doing this though to me is, one, seeing officially translated synopsises of each game in the series, and also getting a good idea of localized names for characters in Japan only games. A lot of these are kind of interesting and in some ways I could make a video on them in their own right, but uh, some of them are kind of cool. Like for example, I can't believe that I didn't see this before. Holland's name. Holland. It was supposed to be Hulin, as in Ku Hulin, the legendary Irish hero. It was supposed to be that all along. I. It seems so obvious to me now, but I can't believe I didn't see it earlier. I also like what they did with Fury's name. Enris, or however you pronounce it, is the Greek name of the Furies from Greek mythology, and so definitely a better name than Fury. That was kind of lame. The only one that I find a bit weird at this point is it looks like Orson's actually changed again, even though they already changed it in Awakening. Orson means bear, so that was actually quite meaningful. I kind of wish they kept that. Also, Marduk? I'm sure that they called him Murdoch in an earlier game. Like, I'm positive that Murdoch was actually not a fan translation, but an official localization of his name at one point. But anyway, I digress. That's pretty much all my thoughts on the Fire Emblem Direct. So, so far it definitely surprised me. I'm looking forward to seeing these games. Uh, yeah, Echoes is coming out way earlier than I thought it would. I'm kind of surprised they didn't announce it until this late. And uh, Fire Emblem Mobile is coming out pretty soon too, so... Looks like there'll be more Fire Emblem in my future. Which is always a good thing. The release schedules might actually cause a bit of a change of plans for my future channel plans, but I will actually talk about that in a separate video. So, yeah. Till next time, see you.